Hello, dear students, and welcome to our next lecture on good business writing. So, uh, let's begin. Right, so if you remember um, what we discussed in our previous lecture, we did touch a little bit on the characteristics of good business writing. And here are some of the, those characteristics of really good or effective business writing. Okay, so we have formal, we have clear and coherent, concise, courteous, professional, uses appropriate language, uses active instead of passive, is positive, and is always accurate with no errors. And we will go through each of these characteristics in detail and also identify good and bad examples of each of these aspects. So, let's begin. Firstly, our business writing has to be formal. You can't run away from this. It has to be formal. And this is used in most business communication. Whether you know the reader well, like your peers or colleagues, or maybe you don't actually know the person, formal is the best way to go. Okay, so we should always use formal and not informal words or phrases. For example, saying sorry is informal. Apologize is formal. Okay, um, but is a little informal. However, is more formal. And there are plenty of other examples um, which you can click on the link here um, on our slideshow. Okay, right. So now, if these are the examples given to you on the left and on the right, which one do you think is a good example of proper business writing? So you can pause here and make your selection. Did you get it? Which one is the right one, left or right? Yes. It is the one on your left. That is using proper formal language in communication, whether it is with someone you know or you don't know very well. Still, always go with formal. Right. Next, however, um, there are some exceptions. Well, you have to be formal, but you can't also be too formal, right? So. Um, in these cases, for example, when you are talking with your co-workers that you work closely with, and this is kind of like an informal situation, like asking them to lunch or talking briefly about a certain project that is informal. All right. So, of course, you would use a different style um, with your co-workers than when you're speaking to your boss. Okay, so now looking at these examples, which one do you think is... Uh, more appropriate. Pause here. So what do you think? Left or right? Of course the one on your left. If you spoke to your boss like the way it's written on the right, you might lose your job. Right. Next, in good business writing, it should be clear, all right, where it's very easy to understand and it is coherent. It must make sense. So be straightforward and direct to the point. Don't beat around the bush, you know, go from A to Z to N and then come back to B. No, just go direct to the point and use simple language so that it is clear. And it has to make sense, flow well. Okay, so now looking at these two examples, which do you think is a good example of good business writing? Pause here. Right, so the left or the right? Of course. <laughs> the one on the right is actually a quote from Three Idiots, the Hindi movie, um, talking about, well, you, you don't have to beat around the bush. Just go direct to the point, use simple language, and not necessarily all these big, gigantic words. Right. You also have to be concise in good business writing. You write briefly, you know, with relevant information to the point. 
and you avoid flowery, you know, like artsy, poetic, verbose, meaning um, very big, bombastic words, and you avoid unnecessary words. If you don't think the details are important or relevant, don't put them in. So then you tend to become wordy, right? And also avoid repeating certain information. If you've already said it, you don't have to say it again. So now looking at these examples, which do you think is a better example of being concise, left or right? Yes, of course, the one on the right. Did you get it? Good job. However, there is one thing to point out. Being concise doesn't actually refer to only the number of words. Being concise doesn't mean just having the shortest number of words, but you're also talking about how important or relevant are those words that you're saying. Okay, so if those details or words are important, then um, you probably need to include them. Concise doesn't mean just cutting off all words. Okay, so now let's to have a better idea, let's look at the examples. Now, if you were the one who were buying those tickets, which do you think is better for you? If somebody wrote these two examples to you, which is more important to you, left or the right? Yes, of course you prefer the one on the right. So this is an example where um, Having more words does not necessarily mean bad, okay? But um, this is not what we're talking about with concise. Concise means you want relevant information, not repetition, not unnecessary details, okay? But the example on the right, those details are important and relevant. So it does not necessarily mean cut off all words, okay? Make it as short as possible, not necessarily. All right, another example is, well, you have to be courteous. You have to be polite. Because when you are courteous in your business communication, your readers, whoever you're talking to, are more likely to agree with you or accept what you're trying to say. Okay, so you should not be curt, like very harsh and sharp. Okay, you shouldn't be arrogant and you shouldn't be demanding like, yes, you must do this or you have to do that. When you, do, when you act that way, people tend to um, resist you or be not as cooperative. So always be courteous if you want people to actually like, not say like, but agree with you or easily accept what you're trying to say. So let's look at these examples and which do you think right, is more courteous and people would be more uh, willing to agree with you. Pause. Well, what do you think? Yes, you're right. Of course, the one on the right. You say we appreciate your attendance rather than having to say you will attend the upcoming meeting, right? Of course, another characteristic of business communication is it has to be professional. You have to always act or behave in a highly ethical manner with high integrity. You're showing your people that you deal with that you are professional and you don't um, uh, act any other way. Okay, so looking at these examples, which do you think is more professional, very ethical and has high integrity? Choose left or right. So what do you think is the answer? Yes, of course, the one on the left. Okay, that sounds more professional rather than um, bugging your people to give you favors or something unethical like that. Okay, then you must also use appropriate language. Now, this is somewhat related to formal. Okay, when you are formal, it is in the terms of the words that you use. So similarly, we have to use appropriate language where you try not to use slangs, okay, um, things that you only say but don't really write, 
um, jargon, meaning words that are very specific to a particular area. You know, for example, if you're talking about um, computers, you talk about RAM and hard drive, and certain words like these may be a little confusing for readers who may not be familiar with the area that you're talking about. So try to avoid jargon like that. Uh, colloquial, meaning um, you use it only in speech. Okay, when you're speaking, it's fine, but not in written language. Um, discriminatory or derogatory language. Well, that means um, language that um, is kind of prejudiced or biased towards a certain kind of people, maybe uh, between uh, among male, female, or different races. Don't use language that is um, biased or prejudiced. So use appropriate language. So between these examples, what do you think? That's right. Of course, it has to be the one on the left. The one on the right is just not appropriate. Yeah, not in business writing, even if you really know um, that colleague really well. It has to be, um, usually we have we use active sentences rather than passive sentences because it is more direct and it is generally shorter and clearer. If you need more examples of what you mean by active or passive, you can click on the link in the slideshow uh, later that I will upload. Okay, so when you use active sentences, it actually energizes your writing and shows confidence. Okay, so... The meeting was led by Tom or Tom led the meeting. Which do you think? Yes, you're right. It should be the one on the right. Tom led the meeting. Active. It is shorter. It is clearer. And that's what you need in business writing. In business writing, we also try to be positive no matter what the subject is or the situation. Even or actually especially if the information that you are about to say is kind of negative. Okay, so in terms of the words that you use, you can give a more positive vibe. For example, um, which would you rather like to read? The one on the left or the right? Yes, if you want to be really positive, it should be the one on the right. Yes, it's bad news. No one's getting any year-end bonus this year. But you don't say it in a negative way. You try to be positive in your writing. Alright, so it should be the one on the right. Good. Lastly, it has to be accurate. Now, this means that you should try to avoid mistakes in grammar, you know, bad sentence constructions, um, wrong punctuation, spelling errors, all these kinds of mistakes, be it intentional or unintentional, kind of reflect really badly on you. And you don't really want that in your business writing, especially if you're dealing with very important people. So as far as possible, always be really careful in your business writing and check for any mistakes or errors that you may make. Or to be safe, always get someone else to help you proofread or double check your language. Right, so if you look at these examples, it shows the importance of punctuation and spelling because it could totally change the message that you're trying to say. And that could be very dangerous depending on um, what subject you're talking about. So which do you think is correct? The, one, the ones on the left or the ones on the right? What do you think? Of course, obviously, it has to be the ones on the right. It is very important to make sure that your language is always accurate. Grammar, sentences, punctuation, and spelling. Because it reflects well on you to have very good, accurate, perfect language. Right? So, grammar is the difference between knowing your shit and knowing your shit. Excuse my language. Alright, so that's about it. Thank you and I'll see you next lesson. Please bring um, any questions if you have any for me and I will gladly um, 
solve any problems you may have. So thank you and bye.